This is a combination, if you like, of non-fiction and fiction. It's the joy of historical fiction, that you have the skeleton of the events there, and what you're doing is filling in the gaps. You probably, if you read non-fiction, you probably come across a story where you, you stop for a moment and you think, God, what must that have been like? And historical fiction, if you like, has that job already done, or at least someone has deliberately filled in those gaps to help you imagine it, and it makes it very, very vivid. You can't find better stories than those in history. That's why I write historical fiction. History has taught us to consider the name Genghis Khan as uh, ruthless and nothing else, but at the same time, it's a story of survival, and it's a story of overcoming incredible odds. And I like that. That appeals to just about everyone, I would think. He is the classic male sort of uh, personality of the boy whose father disappears for, at a young age and is plunged into a very, very uber sort of macho world. And he becomes harder and more ruthless and more, uh, uh, more violent, if you like, than those around him, simply to survive. I like the big stories that you can't, you can't keep in just one book. This is going to be at least three books on Genghis because his life is extraordinary and it's worth telling. And then after that, his son Ogadai, who became Khan, and his grandson, the most famous of all, Kublai Khan, who became Emperor of China. I mean, that's a story arc, from being left to die at the age of 11 to your grandson being the most powerful man on Earth at that time. That's a story worth telling. Khan Igledon also co-wrote the wildly popular Dangerous Book for Boys, proving that learning how to skip a stone or build the perfect paper airplane can be just as entertaining as a great novel. I wrote the book The Dangerous Book for Boys back in 2005 and then went on to write my book on Genghis Khan, beginning a whole new series. The strange thing is that The Dangerous Book for Boys is still doing well, so that both of them came to hit number one in different charts at the same time. Now that was a great pleasure. What I always wanted from a book is that someone goes through it so fast that they hardly know what's happening to them and then it chucks them out at the other end exhausted and slightly dazed. That's my idea of a good book and good writing. That's all I ever wanted. And Genghis Khan is such an extraordinarily good story that it fits, fits my style perfectly. You look at the story of Genghis and you realise what one man can do in 65 years and maybe, just maybe, you think Perhaps I shouldn't spend too much time just drifting through mine. Maybe I should get out and do a little bit more. I mean, you might not conquer the world. It doesn't have to be about conquering the world. It could be a small thing, a small triumph, a small refusal to uh, bow down. And why not?